In part 7 of lecture 3, we will discuss processes in Unix. Unix System 5 makes use of a simple but powerful process facility that is highly visible to the user. Unix follows the model that we saw in the earlier slide, in which most of the operating system executes within the environment of a user process. Unix uses two categories of processes, system processes and user processes. System processes run in kernel mode and execute operating system code to perform administrative and housekeeping functions such as allocation of memory and process swapping. User processes operate in user mode to execute user programs and utilities and in kernel mode to execute instructions that belong to the kernel. A user process enters kernel mode by issuing a system call when an exception or fault is, is, is generated or when an interrupt occurs. A total of nine process states are recognized by the Unix SVR4 operating system. They're listed on the table on this slide. User running, executing in user mode. Kernel running, executing in kernel mode. Ready to run in memory, which is simply waiting for the kernel to schedule it. Asleep in memory, unable to execute until an event occurs. The process is in main memory, but it's effectively blocked. Ready to run, swapped. It is, as the name implies, ready to run, but the swapper must swap the process into main memory before it can even be scheduled. Sleeping, swapped. It is awaiting an event and is therefore blocked, and it has been swapped to secondary storage and would need to be swapped back into main memory to run. Preempted, the process is returning from the kernel to user mode but the kernel preempts it and then it will switch it out and schedule another process instead. Created, it's newly created but not yet ready to run. And a zombie, which does no longer exist, but it still has a record for its parent process to collect. This slide shows the Unix process state transition diagram. It's similar to such a diagram that we saw earlier but there are differences. Unix employs two running states to indicate whether the process is executing in user mode or kernel mode. A distinction is made between the two states, ready to run in memory and preempted. These are essentially the same state as indicated by the dotted line joining them. The distinction is made to emphasize the way in which the preempted state is entered. When a process is running in kernel mode as a result of a supervisor call clock interrupt or input output interrupt, there will be a there will come a time when the kernel has completed its work and is ready to return control to the user program. At this point, the kernel may decide to preempt the current process in favor of one that is ready and of higher priority. In that case, the current process moves to the preempted state. However, for purposes of dispatching, those processes in the preempted state and those in the ready to run in memory state form one queue. Preemption can only occur when a process is about to move from kernel mode to user mode. While a process is running in kernel mode, it may not be preempted. This makes Unix unsuitable for real-time processing, and we will talk about this later in the course. Two processes are unique in Unix. Process 0 is a special process that is created when the system boots. In effect, it is predefined as a data structure loaded at boot time. It is the swapper process. In addition, process 0 spawns process 1, referred to as the init process, 
all other processes in the system, have process 1 as an ancestor. When a new interactive user logs on to the system, it is process 1 that creates a user process for that user. Subsequently, the user process can create child processes in a branching tree so that any particular application can consist of a number of related processes. A process in Unix is a rather complex set of data structures that provide the operating system with all of the information necessary to manage and dispatch processes. The table shown in this slide summarizes the elements of the process image and are organized into three parts user level context, register context, and system level context. The user level context contains the basic elements of the user's program and can be generated directly from a compiled object file. The user's program is separated into text and data areas. The text area is read-only and is intended to hold the program's instructions. While the process is executing, the processor uses the user stack area for procedure calls and returns and parameter passing. The shared memory area is a data area that is shared with other processes. There is only one physical copy of a shared memory area, but by the use of virtual memory, it appears to each sharing process that the shared memory region is in its address space. When a process is not running, the processor status information is stored in the register context area. The system level context contains the remaining information that the operating system needs to manage the process. It consists of a static part which is fixed in size and stays with the process throughout its lifetime, and a dynamic part, which varies in size through the life of the process. One element of the static part is the process table entry. This is actually part of the process table maintained by the operating system, with one entry per process. The process table entry contains process control information that is accessible to the kernel at all times. Hence, in a virtual memory system, all process table entries are maintained in main memory. The next table on the next slide lists the contents of a process table entry. The user area, or U area, contains additional process control information that is needed by the kernel when it is executing in the context of this process. It is also used when paging processes to and from memory. The contents of this table is shown in the slide after the next one. The distinction between the process table entry and the U area reflects the fact that the Unix kernel always executes in the context of some process. Much of the time, the prot kernel will be dealing with the content with the concerns of that process. However, some of the time, such as when the kernel is performing a scheduling algorithm preparatory to dispatching another process, it will need access to information about other processes. The information in a process table can be accessed when the given process is not the current one. The third static portion of the system level contents is the per process region table, which is used by the memory management system. Finally, the kernel stack is the dynamic portion of the system level context. This stack is used when the process is executing in kernel mode and contains the information that must be saved and restored as procedure calls and interrupts occur. This slide shows an entry in the Unix process table. What you can see here are the various fields that are included. Process status, 
showing the current state the process is in. Pointers to the U area and process memory area, including text, data, and the stack. The size of the process, how much space needs to be allocated. User identifiers. Here we'll see the real ID of the user, who's responsible for it, as well as the effective user ID number, which shows the privileges that the user obtained in running this part of the program. Process identifiers identifying this process as well as the parent process. Event descriptor is valid when a process is in a sleeping state. When it occurs, the process is transferred to the ready to run state. Priority, which is used for scheduling. Signal, which uh, enumerates signals sent to a process for the ones that have not yet been handled. The timers in question and a l pointer linking it to the next node in the ready queue. In this slide, we see the U area for the process table entry, the pointer to the process table entry, user identifiers real and effective, timers, signal handling array, and the like. Process creation in Unix is made by means of the kernel system call fork. When a process issues a fork command, the operating system will end up creating a second image of the process and will outline the steps looking at the next slide. Process creation in Unix is made by means of the kernel system call fork. When a process issues a fork request, the operating system performs the following functions. Firstly, it allocates a slot in the process table for the new process. Two, it assigns a unique process identifier number to the child process. Number three, it makes a copy of the process image of the parent, with the exception of any shared memory. Four, it increments counters for any files owned by the parent to reflect that an additional process now also owns those files. Five, it assigns the child process to the ready to run state. And six, it returns the ID number of the child to the parent process and a zero value to the child. When the kernel has completed these functions, it can do one of the following as part of the dispatcher routine. Stay in the parent process, control returns to user mode at the point of the fork call in the parent. Transfer control to the child process. The child process begins executing at the same point in the code as the parent, namely at the return from the fork call. Transfer control to another process. Both parent and child are left in the ready to run state. 